to do some refactoring. I think I had somewhere to do the game board. I'm quite happy with the game board that abstracts away this ugliness of how to initialize a board. Let's get rid of that. And the game itself is setting up the game board. Has some logic about how to set the marker. That's quite nice. Now this one is ugly. Here, get winner. If all the row markers are the same in the row and the play is actually a it is actually a player, then we return that one here. Uh, is it actually the case that we don't have a winner? We don't have that yet. I think we should have that. Um, before I start, I want to remember uh, that rule specification. I like that better. And here, um, no winner yet, that's it. That's the test. I think we should work on next. So, what should get winner return if there is no winner? It probably returns empty string. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's see. No winner yet. Um, only one marker set, no winner yet, that's a better name. So I go back to the game, and that basically means here, if we're coming to this point, we return the string empty. I don't like to solve the string handling at all. Oh, but here we have a problem. Example game, oh, the example game obviously doesn't work. Because here we have 0, 0, 0, 1, and... Zero 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 one zero two. That's not in the row, but it should be the other way around. Zero and two zero. Let's see if that goes. That means the first row. Yep. Tests are quite slow, but they should be in memory. Could be that I have so many Visual Studio extensions installed. Nicer API, make board generic. No, I think first we need to do some refactoring. <coughs> Play marker. I'm kind of okay that. This is definitely not nice. Row zero one. So what I do here is for int uh, create a for loop. Int zero upper is free. And then in here I do E is actually my row. Row. Let's see if that still works. If the row markers are the same. And it is actually a player. Now I have removed the duplication. I'm still mixing the levels of abstraction. What I mean by that is I have here a method that executes something on row, and then I have here this player on this zero, which I don't like. This would be first column. I guess I can... It's not perfect, but it's quite fine, let's say like that. Now, let's look at this test. Uh, this is quite ugly. I have a lot of duplication here. New game. I would rather see something like... Um, I would rather see something like... X. I'm just writing a new test. Winner is X. This is all I really want to write. And then I want to write something like Winner is X. Assert winner is X. Basically here, 
in this way I would like to specify tic-tac-toe because mm. at the moment I have all this noise which I don't like okay. what happens if I inline that new game this game, game winner yeah that's not too bad let's do it like that Yeah. Let's continue with that. Yeah. So get winner marks are the same in first column. So I'm doing this. But it should fail. Yep. Because my game is not implementing any of that. Um, now I do this. If column markers are the same in call in call plus zero. Sometimes my intelligence comes into in call and the row is zero. It doesn't really matter. And say that's uh, zero. Let's create that method. Yep. Call. That's good. Probably looks similar to this one. But zero, one, one, two. So, yep, they are the same. Yep, that's cool. Uh, that's a lot of typing I do here, and the third one, is second, and third. I'm actually writing here two tests at the same time, which is not a good idea because I'm basically breaking the rules of, of writing one test and then driving my, my design from the test. But I just want to get this done and move on to more interesting rules. Okay. Now I'm looking through all the rows, now I'm looking through all the columns, and yeah. I still don't like this. But in order to complete that... I need to socialize that here. I think I just get this done and specify all the cases. So I, I specify the diagonal as well, and then I'm pretty much done with, with the game, and I can move on to more interesting stuff. Diagonal, so like this. Oh, what happens if I actually pass in something like that? Interesting question. Back to you. What happens if I initialize the game with a too long string? Then it probably breaks. I put that on my to-do list, and I should have three things to do, and I should have one failing test with the diagonal. Yep. So the diagonal is if that is not a, then if uh, markers are the same, diagonal markers are the same. And there is a player on position zero zero. Then we return player on position zero. And let's push that down. Same story. Zero zero is same as one one, and one one is same as two two. Yep, passing test, and the final missing puzzle piece is the anti-diagonal in the R2 
Roger Diagonal. Let me test. I'm going through zero, three, zero till no two zero two zero is same as this one is the same as the middle one and the middle one is the same as that one is zero two yep if that is the case I'm returning zero two see if that works that works. Very cool. Uh, <coughs> yeah, not happy with that kind of window function is player. This is probably something that the board could do for me. Yep. Return port that is player. Let's create that method. So the board is deciding where we're actually calling the method in here. If all markers are the same, should the board tell me if the row markers are the same, or should the should the game know about that? I have the impression that the game should know about that. So what I'm doing first, I inlined this bit here where I'm asking the board, hey, is there a player on this position? And I think this will work so the same. I don't know, I don't like all this, this stuff. I like it in the constructor, I like it. I don't like it in this method here. Unit tests are still green. Okay, I think I have pretty much the whole game implemented. I'm still not very clear on if I like a couple of things with the API. <coughs> I think the next step would be to make the board more generic.